but I don't have much patience for anyone who denies that this challenge is real. We don't have time for a meeting of the Flat Earth Society. I'm Jake Blastard, and this is the Top 10 Shit-Sucking Presidents list. Number 10, Bill Clinton. Clinton tried to postpone his impeachment. There was an impeachment vote in the Senate. He bombed Pakistan. I believe it's Pakistan. Never mind his war crimes against Kosovo, Sudan, and a litany of other places. I don't really, he's more of one of the modern presidents. I don't really need to go into detail than the whole Monica Lewinsky thing. I mean, it just goes without saying the guy's an arch criminal. He's number 10 on this list. Number nine, Harry S. Truman. This shit sucker decided to carpet bomb because there's no evidence that nuclear bombs exist. Car- Japan was probably carpet bombed and the Japanese were already willing to surrender. That was just a malicious war crime just to kill millions of people that have nothing to do with the military. Why is it always the, p- the people that have to suffer when the leaders are just obviously megalomaniacs and have their own agenda? Number eight, Dwight D. Eisenhower. There is a lot of uh, information about the Morgenthau plan and how it all ties into Eisenhower wanting to destroy the Amer- the German public, the German people after World War II. And uh, he, he makes the list alone by, on his farewell address, he tried to tell us that there were secret organizations going out working against the American people and the world. And he just didn't come out and say it. It's all going to be cryptic. Instead of just saying, listen, I work for the World Bank and the IMF. I'm just a branch manager. There are people running the planet. They're going to fucking kill you all. Shit sucker decided to make it cryptic and not get to the point. So he makes number eight on this list. Number seven on this list is Herbert Hoover. By now we're aware that the Great Depression was orchestrated by J.P. Morgan and his associates calling back their loans, that it was all part of the architecture of things to control society. And uh, I refuse to believe that Herbert Hoover didn't have a hand in this, knowing, again, that he's merely a manager that serves the IMF and the World Bank. The Jekyll Island deal had already been made, and I sincerely doubt Herbert Hoover wasn't aware of this. These presidents are part of that scheme. They're not working for us. They're, a foreign, they're agents of a foreign corporation. So Herbert Hoover makes number seven on the shit-sucking presidents list. Number six... Lyndon B. Johnson. LBJ is rumored to have a hand in the assassination. He's one of the suspects of the assassination of JFK, who's also an honorable mention in this list for other reasons. But LBJ is also connected to the Vietnam War, and he had foreknowledge and wanted Jackie O to ride in his vehicle instead of stay with JFK. LBJ most likely had foreknowledge. He's he's one of the elite. He's he's one of those um, Bohemian Grove jerk-offs. They sit around and jerk off to Moloch. So LBJ makes number six on this list. Number five on this list, Franklin D. Roosevelt. Right around this time is when the president started getting really shady. Right around World War II. If they didn't start World War I, have a hand in it, and try to stay in the background, they were coming to the forefront in World War II. And uh, Roosevelt, all sorts of shadiness. He brought his ships from California. He brought the fleet to to Hawaii, not not to to stave off a Japanese attack, but to, but as bait to draw them in because he moved all the boats that had the anti-aircraft, the newer boats with the anti-air. He moved them off the out of the harbor, leaving Pearl Harbor virtually defenseless against an air attack, which was very suspicious. And they say he had foreknowledge of it. There was reports in the paper that uh, Hawaii was gonna it was a pr- prospect for attack. So Roosevelt, oh, and also the internment camps, uh, taking American Japanese citizens and putting them in internment camps, camps and violating their co- uh, constitutional bill of rights. This guy is a complete piece of shit. So. Roosevelt comes in at number five as as a shit-sucking president. Coming in at number four on this shit-sucking president countdown, all of our favorites, President Barack Hussein Barry Sotero Obama. Gee, I, I could write a book how much I hate this guy and it has nothing to do with him being from Kenya and faking he's from Hawaii. I don't even think he's black. Is Kenya black? Is Kenyan black? Well, I don't even know. Who knows? Who cares, right? But Obama is the biggest piece of shit to come. He, he's putting the coup de grace. The Bush oligarchy had started. Bush Jr. and Bush Sr. He's putting the coup de grace on the American people and the constant gun grabs, the fake crying, the cult of personality bullshit. It's all just to get the ignorant masses to, to serve a black man. That's all it is. So he comes in at number four for obvious reasons on this presidential shit sucker countdown. Coming in at number three, Bush Sr. Now, Bush's daddy was Prescott Bush. 
I think he was a senator. Or kind of, he was in he was in politics a long time. He was also friends with Aleister Crowley. And you know how these black magic motherfuckers like to get around a pentagram around Moloch and start jerking off. Uh, somehow Aleister Crowley had a kid, ugly daughter, one fucking ugly kid. It looks like it looks like Aleister Crowley with hair. She porked George Bush. Well, senior, excuse me, Prescott Bush. Bush's son is Bush Senior. So Aleister Crowley's kid, Prescott Bush's kid, fucked each other and had the oligarch that we know as the Bush family. So they're, so Bush Sr.'s coming in at number three, and I don't, I'm not even going to go over the list, the war with Iraq, the war with everything, the war against the American people. Uh, this, we all know we hate Bush Sr. So he's coming in at number three on this list. Coming in at number two, Bush Jr. Again, completely obvious and never-ending wars. He, wants to, he wanted to go to war with Iran, went to war with Iraq, uh, furthered war into Pakistan. On his final presidential address, he kisses Henry Kissinger right on the mouth. Like, a big, wet, sloppy kiss right on the mouth. Oh, yeah. It's fucking gross, dude. I mean, it's one thing to be gay, but it's one thing to be gay with Henry... K- Leatherface Kissinger? Really? These guys are into some really... Hink- you, you, you gotta wonder if they're sucking each other's cocks. This is some hinky fucking shit we're talking about. So I'm not even going to go into detail. We all know. Bush Jr. is coming in at number two on this list of shit-sucking presidents. And finally, coming in at number one, Abraham Lincoln. This is the whole reason I'm doing this top ten. I fucking hate Abraham Lincoln with a fucking passion. Why do you see him everywhere? Do you ever wonder why he's everywhere and he's touted as some great hero? Because he started the D.C. Corporation. He federalized the company. He made it official. The Jekyll Island motherfuckers and all them, their plan came into fruition the minute they had a corporation set in Delaware in Maryland called DC. These fuckers, Abraham Lincoln had 300 and some odd Native Americans killed because they hated the federal government. Isn't that nice? Had him hung, rounded up and hung. Hey, Abraham Lincoln, in his defense, you know, he's watching one of the greatest republics turn against each other, brother killing brother, to, because, just to enslave another race. Okay, fine. I know extreme measures had to be taken, but I'm, I'm not giving him any pass to killing the Native Americans the way he did. I'm not giving him, and I know the Native Americans were warring well before we showed up and would have wiped each other out until one tribe was left. Fine. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not credulous to these facts. The bottom line is he started all that turmoil we're in. Because now we've got the federal government and they're just ruling over the republic and they have no jurisdiction on the real land. I've said this several times. And that's why Abraham Lincoln is touted everywhere. He's considered the second greatest president because of helping the corporation establish a foothold and to destroy freedom, all of our freedom. So whether he did it inadvertently or directly, some say John Wilkes Booth did the republic a favor. I have to applaud John Wilkes Booth. The man was a hero. So, this has been the top 10 shit-sucking presidents. I also have some honorable mentions. Honorable mention number one, Nixon, for obvious reasons. I'm not going to go into detail, just research his name. And number two, Kennedy, John F. Kennedy. Another one, oh, he's such a hero, he's such a great man. I don't see it. The man committed adultery. We all know the moon's a projection now, so he's going where? He wanted to go to the moon with the Russians. How? Why? How is that going to be done? He's just perpetrating another fraud. He probably would he probably would have revealed the secret societies running everything. That's why they killed him, and that's the bottom line. Maybe even about the flat earth. Maybe he wanted to tell the truth about that. But John F. Kennedy's dad was a a, a thug during during the Prohibition era, era. He was a mobster. He was a lead mobster, and he promised all the gangsters special dispensation. We'll lay off the mob. We won't bother you. You you can go back in the ground, and nobody will speak about you. What happened? As soon as John F. Kennedy got into office, his brother went straight after the mob, and that that is some hinky shit. Well, I don't know. I don't know what exactly is going on there, but that is some hinky, hinky shit. So he makes number two on the honorable mention list. Number three is George Washington. The man had slaves. The man is not a hero. He was a Mason first and a president second. What the fuck is that? What does that tell you? Where his loyalties lie? And finally, he just didn't want to kick up to the queen. Fuck the queen. That's what he said. Fuck the queen. I ain't kicking up to that fucking raggedy old bitch. I may look like her, but I'm not kicking up to her. Fuck George Washington. Fuck all these presidents. All these people are not looking out for our best interest. And this segues into what I wanted to cover originally as well, an electronic voting system. The delegates 
The presidents, the politicians, they don't work for us. They're a foreign occupying army. Were they even ever into our best interest for the, for the common man? No, they weren't. They're lords of the land, and they're no good to us. We don't have representatives. The last time we had representatives was when a man named Tim Turner declared himself the Republic president. And if you don't know who Tim Turner is, Timothy Turner, he's in federal prison right now. Research him. Research Tim Turner. You'll get an earful as to who he is. He's got plenty of videos on YouTube. These people don't represent us. The Diebold machines are fixed. It's come out, I believe it's come out in court, definitely in court hearings, and I, I think it come out, came out in congressional hearings. These Diebold machines disenfranchise, they disenfranchise everyone that, well, mostly if they want to disenfranchise, say, say the voting isn't going their way, okay? Let's hit the blacks. This, this happened during George Bush's election. Let's just disenfranchise the blacks. It's all dead entities to them. The legal names in all caps is what they're using. One walking around corpse is the same as some buried corpse to them. So they just disenfranchise those. And then they just look up all the voters who the, the voters who are dead. Their names are still in the machine. We'll just use their votes. Oh, he's Republican? Well, we'll just take those votes for Republican. One dead name is as good as another. Everybody should have access to the Internet. And this is the, new, this is the voting system that I've come up with. And it's not hard to think about or figure out. Everybody's got a serial number to their vote. This serial number defines them in their vote. So every, there's a public poll that will, instead of having delegates, which I've known a delegate for the Ron Paul movement, who's been disenfranchised. They go there and it's all teleprompted. It's all scripted ahead of time. The popular vote means nothing. The delegates mean nothing. 10,000 people to one is not voting. It's, it's just, it's stupid. It's outdated, outmoded, maybe at one time, but now we have the internet. Everybody should have access to the internet with a serialized number. And this way they can come to you. Hey, uh, did you vote this way? This is your serial number in your name, right? Yes, yes it is. Okay, did you make this vote? Yes, I did. Did you vote this way? Yes, I did. Now you're accountable. Now you're trackable and accountable. They don't want that. No personal accountability on the, on the flat plane prison. None of that, because we'll, we'll start making headway clean up the pollution, stop the GMO, stop the chemtrails. Everything will just stop. Their whole plan will fall apart when everybody's accountable and everybody matters. And every This is a prison. This is a soul prison. I can't say it enough. So this is Jake Blastard, and this has been your top 10 shit-sucking presidents.